welcome to our next session, celebrating Gangadhar Chital in the year of his birth centenary. Hariva Niridu, this is flowing water. This session is presented by Art Mantram and the Glasshouse Festival of Poetry. Gangadhar Chital made his mark as a major poet in Canada with a total of just 74 poems in his active professional life. Jan Kaikini, who will present his reflections on Chital's poetry and vision, uh, is with us today. And to briefly introduce him, Jan Kaikini is a Canada poet, short story writer, columnist, and playwright, as well as a lyricist and script writer for films. He won the Karnataka Sahitya Academy Award for his debut poetry collection in 1974 at the age of 19, followed by three more for his short story collections. Born in the coastal temple town of Gokarna, Kaikini is a biochemist by training and worked in the pharmaceutical industry in Mumbai for two decades before moving to Bengaluru, where he resides with his family. He's received, among his many awards, the Katha Award for Creative Fiction, the Karnataka State Award for Best Dialogue, and the Filmfare Award for Best Lyrics. No Presence, Please, his volume of selected Mumbai stories, translated by Tejaswini Niranjana, is the first book in translation to have won the DSC South Asian Literature Prize in 2018. His most recent publications include a translation of his short story collection, Mithun No. 2, and a recently released collection of his prose writing, Tari Dande, which was just launched last weekend. I invite Jayanth on stage. Good evening, Elrigo Namaskara. I think all of you can come here only. <laughs> It will be more intimate discussion. Uh, nice for staying back. Uh, Gangadhar Chittal, uh, uh, about whom I'm going to talk, he was one of, he's one of the major poets of Kannada. It's very interesting that this year has been centenary celebration of many major writers in Kannada. Gangadhar Chittal, Suram Mekundi, Vyasrao Ballad, um, uh, then uh, Srinivas Havnur, name them. And they are all now, see, just can't believe they were born, all, so many good people were born 100 years ago at the same time. And in this Srinivas Havnur, Gangadhar Chittal, they spent entire life in Bombay. And I had a very close uh, contact with uh, both of them. And it's something unbelievable to think that uh, they created such an interesting uh, body of work for Kannada. Gangadhar Chittal uh, wrote only 74 poems. That's very interesting. You know, he has brought, uh, he lived for 40, 64, years, uh, 64 years, and he wrote only 74 poems. But he's one of the major uh, trendsetter uh, poet in Kannada. I have in one of my books, poetry collections, I have dedicated it to Gangadhar Chittal, K.V. Tirumalesh, um, and A.K. Ramanujan. Because without reading them, I could not have become poet. They are the culprits. If I become a poet, that's because of I read them. That much impact they had. So I'll just read one of his poem in English translation, because uh, he teaches English in Pune University, uh, Aurangabad, and he has done a lot of translation from Kannada to English. So I requested him to translate a poem for, him, for me, and he has, because I'll first read a poem and I'll talk about his uh, journey in very briefly. This poem is called Samparka in Kannada. Samparka means contact. It's about when children are told in the school to, you know, grow some plants at home on first floor or second floor in their balcony in a small tin thing. Typical urban element, you know, which is not a big thing in uh, rural areas or away from uh, urban areas where you 
you can plant things around in your house but here you plant it in a old dalda dabba or old some amul dabba tin dabba you put some you know mannu and uh, put uh, seeds in it and then uh, grow a plant so this is about that it's a very simple but at the same time very evocative last week our sarita came home dancing she was told at school to plant wheat maize rice and other seeds and grow into saplings it all began with children frolicking rushing and writing there was a lot of sewing work happening on the fifth floor i sat amused watching these child farmers who had never seen a farm they brought dust from the street in empty bins planted dry seeds to germinate poured water from bottles and stood in innocent pride satisfied with their harvest work after 5 or 6 days sarita got up early every morning but there was no news in the mud however the day before a couple of a day before a couple of particles here and there showed traces of shaking yesterday something inside seemed to stir as if waking from sleep and today a burst of wonder unfolded before our eyes pushing aside the soil like children do hundreds of sprouts emerged as children gathered around this marvel to took look at to look at the guests who had responded to the care of water and soil i too sat down feeling like an awestruck child i sat there watching the cute sprouts smooth and soft like infants feeling love welling up within me i le- leaned closer touched them with my finger feeling happy out of curiosity i moved the soil to the side and saw that the seeds had split into round shape five or six root needles had been sent down into the soil while the sapling emerged from the split in the seeds like a central pillar i marveled at the wonder of creation taking place even in the street dust put in empty tins and i felt it with my i felt it with my fingers an excitement kept breaking within me to be so intimately connected with the creation of life so this is this shows how he is very closely connected to a you know uh, beginning of a new life now i'll tell talk about him uh, how was his journey see there is another writer called yashwan chittal who is his brother he comes from a chittal family from north kanra district yashwan chittal was in bandstand where hebbar stayed nearby so uh, he was the elder brother gangadhar chittal then there was damodar chittal there was mohan chittal mohan chittal was a musician uh, gangadhar chittal is a poet yashwan chittal is a one of the finest fiction writers in kannada he is novel shikari is in available in penguin in english translation he wrote about corporate uh, politics and corporate uh, all whatever things happen in 1974 so that novel is also available he comes from chittal family that that uh, the entire family is very near to my place called gokarna and chittal was very brilliant gangadhar chittal in 1940 he stood first in his uh, 10th ssc exam then in 1940 to the entire mumbai karnataka at that time you know that bombay karnataka was sindh gujarat maharashtra and north karnataka so he stood first for that and then in 1942 he was in dharwad he was studying for his graduation he was debarred from karnataka college because he was active in freedom uh, struggle he he wrote poems about freedom and all that then in 1948 he uh, became i a and as and he became chief account account gen, accountant general or something like that i didn't write it properly and he was in washington london for some time he was a director of audits there then he came back to bombay he was a, a chief of uh, railway audits in uh, western railway uh, in churchgate and he retired there he ha- he wrote his first book kala the kare in ni- 1948 it had a preface by gopal krishna adiga one of the prominent navya writers see he came in 
his first book came in 1948. That was the end of a romantic period in Kannada poetry, and it was just the beginning of uh, uh, modern poetry. Uh, it started in 50s and 60s. Then came postmodern. Then came socially relevant uh, poetry like that. There are four, four phases you can see. But he was away from all this. But he responded in his own way. He was very, very deeply human, and uh, he was not perturbed or he was not, you know, influenced by any of these kinds. He had his own idiom, his own rhetoric, and his own own worldview. Kalada Kare was his first book, which came in 1948. Then Manukula the Hardu, it came in 1961. In that, uh, he wa it was known for uh, his uh, progressive thinking and earnest. Uh, very pramanikate means very 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 sincere uh, to his own experiences then there was a debate at that time a uh, famous critic called kirtinath kurtukoti he raised a if a poet cannot transcend his problems how can he be a poet okay you are very sincere to the issues you have but you are writing to go through it you are not writing just about it unless you transcend the problem or the issue or the subject then how can it be poet see these kind of discussions happened around his poetry at that time and one reason was he was not part of that you know modernist movement in kannada he was away then harivani ritu this is the area uh, time uh, collection which i got drawn to because it came in 1970 that was the time when my contemporaries and me we were getting poems like we were getting pimples <laughs> that was the age teenage and uh, we were very much drawn by uh, uh, gangadhar chittal's harivani ridu then uh, kv tirumalesh mukhamukhi that's another famous uh, this thing ak ramanujan's hokkulalli hovilla these through collections you know they just uh, drew us all together and they heralded a new kind of a beginning in uh, kannada poetry in this you are anant murthy writes preface for this uh, harivani ridu so he says when all heroes seem hollow we can see a new dheera udatta hero coming out of uh, uh, mr gangadhar chittal's poetry so that that was a very interesting thing and that one collection harivani ridu had just 12 poems can you ever imagine a collection of just 12 poems having such an impact that was gangadhar chittal then came samparka it was in 1983 that's all and now i'll talk about the you know various uh, important uh, features of his writing one is the entire chittal family was very much haunted by death with all dignity i am sharing this details because uh, they are all dear to us we are a family as a writers we are all family as readers we are all family even yashwant chittal was haunted by death in his writings gangadhar chittal was also haunted by his death because i think uh, their father uh, committed suicide due to some illness he could not tolerate something like that so so that you know all his, all their poems this death comes in a different way and it you know it, it they have to deal with that and then they have to look at life so they go through it and look at life sometimes they look at life and just you know realize about this later so that kind of a osmosis keeps happening in uh, uh, yashwan chittal's writing and even in gangadhar chittal's writing and uh, uh, he is very uh, interestingly he has written poems about uh, his relatives like you know which you know vyakti chitra we call it you know about personalities about his mother he has written tai see that tai there is one picture is that it's beautiful he uh, how he describes tai he describes everything in his garden in a hitlu where you know you have vegetables you have flower you are you know in, you know like just the plants which are grown in a indifference you know it's not that you have you know cropped them you know typical naturally grown front yard so he says kandavarella heluttare alliga enu ulidilla ನನ್ನ ನೆನಪಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾತ್ರ ಹಿ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ಸ್ ಹರಿಯುತ್ತಲೇ ಇದೆ ನೀರು ಹಿತ್ತಲ ತುಂಬ ಹರಿಯುತ್ತಲೇ ಸಿ ಹರಿಯುವ ನೀರಿದ್ದ ಫ್ಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಈಸ್ ಈಸ್ ರಿಕರಿಂಗ್ ಇಮೇಜ್ ಹರಿಯುತ್ತಲೇ ಇದೆ ನೀರು ಹಿತ್ತಿಲ ತುಂಬ ದೊಟ್ಟೆಯಿಂದೆತ್ತಿ ತೊಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ಚೆಲ್ಲಿ ಸುರುಬಿದ್ದು ಸಬ್ಜೆಗೆ ತುಳಸಿಗೆ ನಿತ್ಯ ಪುಷ್ಪಕ್ಕೆ ಅಕ್ಕರೆಯಿಂದ ಚೊಂಬಿನಡಿ ಕೈ ಹಿಡಿದು ತುಂತುರಿಸ
ಕೆಸರ ಕಸುವಿಗೆ ಹಿಗ್ಗಿ ಗೊನೆ ಹಿಡಿದ ಹೊಂಬಾಳೆ ಬಚ್ಚಲ ರೊಚ್ಚೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಕರ್ರೆಗೆ ಸೊಕ್ಕಿ ಹಬ್ಬಿದ ಬಸಳೆ ಬಸಳೆ ಸೊಪ್ಪು ಈಸ್ ಎನದರ್ ರೆಗ್ಯುಲರ್ ವೆಜಿಟೇಬಲ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸುತ್ತಲೂ ಬೆಳೆವ ಗಿಡಬಳ್ಳಿಗಳ ಮೈ ರಸದ ಸರಬರ ಸದ್ದು ಸೊಗಸು ಮಧ್ಯದಲ್ಲೇ ತಾಯಿ ಸಿ ಹಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಡನ್ಲಿ ಎಮಿಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮದರ್ ತಾಯಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಟಾಕ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಬಾಳೆ ಬನ ಬಾಳೆ ಬನ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಬನಾನ ಬಾಳೆ ಈಸ್ ಬನಾನ ಬಾಳೆಹಣ್ಣು ಬಾಳೆಕಾಯಿ ಎಟ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಇನ್ ಕನ್ನಡ ಬಾಳು ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಬಾಳೆ ಬನ ಅದರಾಚೆ ಸುಖದ ಒಲು ಬಿಸಿಲು ಹರಡಿರುವ ತೆಂಗಿನ ತೋಟ ಅದರಾಚೆ ಗುಟ್ಟಿನಲು ಗುಡ್ಡ ಅದರಾಚೆ ಅದೃಷ್ಟ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಬಾಳೆ ಬನ ಅದರಾಚೆ ಸುಖದ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಸನ್ ಲೈಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಎ ಏನೋ ಪ್ಲೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಏನೋ ಸೈನ್ ದೆನ್ ಹರಡಿರುವ ತೆಂಗಿನ ತೋಟ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಪಾಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಗಾರ್ಡನ್ ದೆನ್ ಅದರಾಚೆ ಗುಟ್ಟಿನಲು ಗುಡ್ಡ ಗುಟ್ಟು ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಮಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಸೀಕ್ರೆಟ್ ದ ಹಿಲ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಸೀಕ್ರೆಟ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಮಿಸ್ಟೀರಿಯಸ್ ಸೀಕ್ರೆಟ್ಸ್ ಅದರಾಚೆ ಅದೃಷ್ಟ ಅದೃಷ್ಟ ಇಸ್ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ಲಿ ಯೂಸ್ ಡಿ ಅದೃಷ್ಟ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ಸೀನ್ ಎಟ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಅದೃಷ್ಟ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಲಕ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವಿ ಯು ಸೆ ಅದೃಷ್ಟ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿದ್ದರೆ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ಸೀನ್ ಅನ್ನೋನ್ ಅನ್ಸೆಡ್ ಯು ನೋ ಅನ್ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಕೇ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಒನ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ನೋ ಹೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎನದರ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಟೆಲ್ ಅಲಾಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಹೀ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಸಫರ್ಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಪಾರ್ಕಿನ್ಸನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಟೈಮ್ ವಿಚ್ ಕಟ್ ಶಾರ್ಟ್ ಹೀಸ್ ಜರ್ನಿ ಈವನ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಎ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಈವನ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಎ ಪೋಯೆಟ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಸ್ಯಾಡ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಯು ನೋ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಟು ಲುಕ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯು ನೋ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಅವೇ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಈಸ್ ವಿಂಡೋ ಟು ಕೀಪ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಯು ನೋ ಇನ್ಸ್ಪೈರ್ಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಡೇ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ಈ ಮಹಾದ್ ಅದ್ಭುತದಿ ಉದ್ಭವಿಸಿ ಬಂದಿವೆಲ್ಲ ಅದೇ ಒಂದು ಹಿಗ್ಗು ಎಚ್ಚೆತ್ತು ನಿಂದಿಹೇವಲ್ಲ ಅದೇ ಒಂದು ನೆತ್ತರಲ್ಲಿ ದಿನರಾತ್ರಿ ಹರಿವ ಸುಖ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸಚ್ ಎ ಮಿಸ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಎಮಿಟ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಕಮ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎ ವಾಟ್ ಎ ವಾಟ್ ಎ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಟೆಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಟು ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಎನಿ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಸ್ ಟೆಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಹಿ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ವೆಲ್ ಹಿ ಈಸ್ ಫೈಟಿಂಗ್ ಪಾರ್ಕಿನ್ಸನ್ಸ್ ಎಟ್ ದಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಪಾರ್ಕಿನ್ಸನ್ಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ವೆರಿ ರ್ಯಾರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನವೇ ಡೇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಟ್ರೀಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಮ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಲಿವ್ ವಿತ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇನ್ ಕಂಫರ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ಎಟ್ ದಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟೀಸ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟೀಸ್ ಏಯ್ಟೀಸ್ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ದೆನ್ ಹಿ ಟಾಕ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ಹುಡ್ ಹೋಮ್ ವೇರ್ ಹಿ ಹಿ ಕುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗೋ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಹಿ ಕುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಟ್ರಾವೆಲ್ ಬಟ್ ಹಿ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಹಿ ಗೋಸ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ವೈಲ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ಗೋಸ್ ದೇರ್ then he there is a image which i will never forget he goes there and sees and uh, there was a mavina mara there was a mango tree which was there earlier now it is not there so he describes it in a such a way hagalallu kattalannu hodda kari mavina mara the mango tree which used which used to spread even uh, shadow even the broad daylight bolagi it has gone bani gondu dodda thootu there is a hole in the sky see it's very interesting image a tree is not there means we think there is a hole in the uh, earth no he says the the tree which was you know covering uh, covered with light and uh, darkness it's no more and there is a big hole in the sky so this is kind of a different kind of imagery uh, he says and regarding poetry he has a very interesting image any poem he talks about his poem but it is a, i think applicable to all our poetry or maybe any of piece of art or any piece of literature he
Then one image which is uh, uh, very unique uh, is he talks about his mother in the poetry uh, poem about his mother. Elu makkala horedu kemi kemi sanna davalu. She delivered eight uh, uh, babies and she coughed and coughed and coughed and she became small. He says, Elu makkala hetu kemi 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 sanna davalu. Walagolage orale hati mai kalechi manna davalu. See, orale means. I think we call it that termites. Uh, hmm? Okay, termites. No, what do you call? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, all earthen hill. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so like a wall, a wall of uh, earth or anything which is you know beaten by termites and the entire wall collapses. Collapses. She, you know, she coughed and coughed and coughed and she uh, she vanished. That's what he says. So this is the way, and everywhere you go, see again, seed came, again, Harivan Iridu came, again, the you know uh, nature came. So it is a it's a, it's a fight for survival to be part of uh, this uh, nature. I will read one line and I will finish it. I think. Five more minutes are there. It is better to do like this. It means five minutes or it means you just stop. <laughs> anyway, I just finish it. <laughs> I'll tell you one small incident. Maybe I would, I went to some uh, festival in Alvas Nudisiri, big youth festival. They had this uh, podium. And while I went to the podium to start my talk, the one of the organizers came to me, sir, there is a bulb there. After 10 minutes, it will become yellow. <laughs> then after 15 minutes, it will become red. <laughs> so you go. I told him, see, we are writers. It doesn't work. Do something that will get shock. <laughs> Only then we'll stop talking. Otherwise, we'll go on talking. The flowing waters, no? that's why I, you know, we, me and uh, Pratiti, when we were thinking what to name this session, we said, uh, we decided on Harivaniridu, that is flowing waters. So one line connecting to that, I will read and finish it off. Harivaniridu, Hariyalarada Hole, Marali Mula Dede Nirata, Eka Mukagami. What it means is, this is flowing water, a stream incessantly flowing in one direction, unable to return to its source. The more it flows, the greater its invisible basin, greater its invisible basin becomes. And the more it flows, the more it envelops, becoming just this very moment. O oh, forward flow that holds lifelines in each moment. Who has managed to swim twice in the rush of the same waters you are a path that moves even while still. Who can remain in the same place beyond a moment amid your constant pace? This is uh, Hariva Niridu. I think I will uh, wind up now here. Unless. Uh, another one image, like he said, Kemmi, Kemmi, Varale. Another is, I think his father uh, had uh, some incurable skin disease or something. I mean, I'm telling this with a lot of dignity with a, you know, we have, it's 100th year of uh, his, this thing. So, uh, no sensationalizing the detail, I'm doing it. He says, Jeevakke bigida ghata sarpa vai tu deha. The deha, the body became like a ghata sarpa, which is, you know, which is uh, tying up our soul. See, these are the images which are uh, very uh, this thing. And he was not uh, uh, writing much uh, in his later stages. Once Mr. Gopal Krishna Adiga had come to Bombay, then Yashwan Chittal, Adiga and me went to meet him in Borivili. And there was a Gulmohar tree outside. And it was fully bloomed uh, tree. Then he, we went inside and he had written, just, he knew that Adiga is coming to see him. So he had written, two new poems the earlier night. 
and he had written them and he wanted to read them to him which he has not done in 3 4 years so when we went there and uh, we were talking and his wife she went inside to make tea uh, she went to in the kitchen to make tea at the same time he removed the notebook and he started reading the poem then the wife put off the gas and came running and stood in the door and watched uh, husband reading the poem because it was a it has happened after a long time so she went to make tea for the guests but when gangadhar chittal started reading poem again to the guests she switched off she came running stood near the window near the curtain and she went she just watched him reading the poem so that image i have in my mind so my salutes to him who has inspired many like me uh, to you know travel into this uh, uh, poetry uh, path thank you so much pratiti thank you